let's go on to create dependencies now. So how do we create dependencies? Uh, essentially in here, select names of the task 2 and 3. Okay. So uh, there is a dependency between, of course, we can understand, right? So between, uh, unless until you gather the requirements, the analysis cannot be started. So we are selecting these two tasks, requirement gathering and requirement analysis. Then only we can make, create a dependency. So what is dependency? So how, how we go on creating? So on task tab in schedule group, as you can see, link the selected task. So you have a link over here. Yeah. There's the one. So this is a link and once you click on it, these two gets linked up. And you can see that. So I'm just going back. So before it is like this. Okay. So now I select uh, task two and task three, right? Requirement gathering and requirement analysis. And I'm linking them as the if I hover over there, uh, keep my cursor over there, it, it says link the selected task. So you can use control F2 as a uh, shortcut. So you can link uh, the task. So one can't start until the other has finished. You can also link task in other ways such as, right? So once I link, you can see uh, this is the way uh, your Gantt chart is showing right now. That Task 3 is dependent on task 2, right? And what kind of relationship they have? Finish to start. So we are going to see the relationships uh, between uh, so uh, between the two tasks uh, in a short while, okay? But this relationship is the task 2 finishes, then task 3 can be started. So that is the relationship between these two tasks. So once uh, you have linked the task, and then I have an important question to ask. So, yeah, go ahead, ask, she says, and he, the man, project manager, he asks, like, what if there is some dependencies for the team member of requirement analysis? Will MSB, MSP be able to operate that? So essentially, how, how do I create those dependencies? And, and that's how uh, we have already seen this. So task two and three are linked with finish to start relationship. Uh, repeat above steps to create dependency among all the relevant tasks. So let's do that. There is another way. Uh, you can just put the number of predecessor and these all get linked. So as you can see, in your Gantt chart, essentially yeah, all the requirement definition related subtasks, they are dependent on each other. So, and their relationship is finished to start. So the first task finishes, then the second start, uh, task can be started. So there is no overlap shown in here. Yeah. So I think that's about it for now. We repeated all the steps uh, to create the dependencies among all the relevant tasks. So there are, uh, these are the types of uh, dependencies. I am going to take a little bit into theory for you uh, right now. Uh, so these are the types of dependencies. You have finish to start, start to start, finish to finish, and start to finish. So as you can see, the finish to start, finish of the predecessor determines the start of successor. So likewise, start to start, start of the predecessor determines the start of successor. And finish to finish, finish of the predecessor determines finish of the successor. And start of predecessor determines the finish of the successor. So I'm going to take you a little bit of theory uh, before we move on from here. Okay. So when you sequence the activities, uh, this theory is from uh, uh, PMBOK guide that we teach to our PMP students. So if you have done it, I think you then already know it. In case you don't know, uh, I'm just going to repeat it. So you have uh, first relationship, finish to start. I think this we already have seen with the example, right? 
and uh, the finish date of the predecessor task this we also have seen so initial uh, basically in here the uh, successor depends on uh, successor starts depends on finish of the uh, predecessor in here uh, predecessor start predecessor start depends on start of the uh, the successor start depends on predecessor start so that's what the dependency is that is a start to start the example is scrap the flicking paint of the house okay so I can give you one more example so let's say leveling the con concrete which is successor cannot begin until poor foundation which is pre predecessor begins so that is another example right so you cannot begin the pri begin the priming the house unless and until you scrap the flaking paint of the house so that's what the start to start relationship going to the next uh, finish to finish relationship the finish date of the predecessor task right determines the finish date of the successor so you cannot finish offshore infrastructure setup unless and until you finish on-site uh, KT or knowledge transfer. Another example I can give is a simple example. Uh, writing a document. Let's say writing a document is a predecessor task. Right? Is required to finish before editing the document can finish. So editing document can be here. So uh, writing document and editing document have finish to finish relationship. Uh, the last one uh, very rarely used but uh, it is a possibility so start to finish the start date of predecessor task so uh, basically you cannot uh, finish the setup of automation tools unless and until uh, testing lab a start is available okay so that is the dependency a uh, better example from real life is uh, let's say you have a uh, in sec security guard shift uh, you have first guard uh, first security guard uh, his shift is a successor uh, it cannot finish so first guard security his shift cannot finish until the second security guard shift start so that is uh, the example so this is a uh, pretty rarely used, whereas finish to start is uh, very commonly used. Yeah. So that's about it. Uh, all right. So these are the task dependencies. I'm back to our. Uh, uh, so you got the examples also. We have seen. We usually use finish to start. So let's see uh, where in actual project we get these uh, relationships. So this is where uh, you can just double click uh, the successor or predecessor, basically mainly successor. And uh, you can see uh, predecessor for this is a requirement gathering. Uh, for requirement analysis is requirement gathering. And it has a uh, the four possibility usually will use uh, finish to start. So uh, to see how start to start looks, you can uh, select start to start and click OK. This is how it will look like. Yeah. So which is not usually the case, and what we do is uh, finish to start is uh, very commonly used, and we use the lead, lag, those kind of things, which we'll see in a moment. So here, uh, coming back, we already have seen uh, task dependencies, right? And uh, we have created a blank project. So lead task will start earlier. Lag task start task start is delayed. So lead is entered as negative number. Okay. So let's see with example. So Let's do that. Let's create a, a lead in here. Usually, uh, we want, I mean, 
this is complete waterfall model, right? Uh, if you see, I'm just pulling it in front of you. You can see that these all tasks are, you know, very pretty finely uh, dependent on each other. So unless until the previous task is finished, the requirement gathering is finished, you ca cannot start requirement analysis. So is the case of, you know, draft, review and final. So how do we do uh, in this case, uh, how do we go about adding lead and lag? So let's do that. So in here, uh, I, uh, I will add a lead of two days, let's say, so that there is some overlapping, right? Same, I'll do it here. I'm just double clicking uh, on that and uh, I come here, right? So one day lead, for example. And this is the way uh, you can achieve better scheduling uh, and usually that is the case uh, with the way we do it uh, practically also. Yeah, because a lot of things will be clear in the first phase of the uh, requirement gathering itself. So le uh, later phases will be, you know, some, so whatever is gathered so far, you can start working on those requirements and uh, whatever is getting gathered uh, later on, you can start working on, uh, you know, a later part of the requirement analysis. So that's the way it is. So as you can see, lead is entered as needed. So we entered exactly lead. Lag is simple. So let's do one example of lag over here. So let's say the final is we show lag of one day. Usually it doesn't make sense, you know, when this kind of uh, relationship is there. So let's say, uh, not very practical, but uh, what we can do is in here, so as you can see, uh, the, produce, uh, the lag lead, everything is uh, shown over here. We just remove the lag. Uh, what we can do is for final uh, and uh, draft and review, uh, we can do the final and review uh, parallelly, let's say. So let's put it start to start. Now, since we have start to start, uh, we can, let's say these are, this is taking two days and this is also taking two days uh, to just make sense of out of it. So the final can be delayed because now there is a start. Uh, so we put a lag of one day. So this is how your Gantt chart will look like now. Yeah. So you can see there is a delay, right, of one day, uh, lag of one day. Lag is exactly a delay. And uh, you can advance uh, or lead the activities by a day over here, right, um, by a couple of days over here. So that's about uh, lead lag, putting it, uh, you know, practically. Uh, this really helps you in case, uh, you know, you haven't done it before. Now coming to, uh, if I want to the next slide, it says, if I want MSP to schedule my task automatically, will it be possible? So yes, it is very possible, very much possible. Please explain. So this is the way you can go and do the auto schedule. So let's do the way it is suggesting. Select names of the task from two to seven and click on task tab. So this is a task tab, right, or, or task group as you, uh, you, in task tab you have, this is a task tab actually, resource report, and then you go to task group. So this is a group and you can click on auto schedule. So let's do that and see what happens. So here, as you can see, uh, schedule for selected task switches to automatic. So this is the way it has been done that, you know, all the tasks have been uh, uh, selected and these all the file, uh, which is essentially subtask of a requirement definition, which is a requirement definition is summary task of all these files. So these five are selected 
and uh, you press on auto schedule. So let's do that and see what happens. So I have selected the five tasks and pressed on. So this is a task tab. Now this is a task group and this is a manual schedule, right? And this is auto schedule. So now I have done the auto schedule. Something happened, you didn't notice because uh, this was not there. So what I am going to do right now, I'm doing, going to do control Z. So I'm still on manual, okay? Now I'm going to show you what is happening. So uh, this is what we have, right? All the tasks are manually scheduled and uh, there is definition, I'm just defining it again, okay? So as you can see, if uh, they are not uh, manually selected, right, I can auto schedule them. So in that case, what is happening is, they are taking appropriate days. Thus, earlier it was 16 days uh, when I uh, switched to auto schedule. They are taking appropriate days exactly. So. Uh, considering even Saturday, Sunday and all that, right? So working days are uh, already there. So likewise, uh, it is showing uh, 17 days in total, starting with whatever, in our case, it is uh, uh, 929. So today's date, 2014, yeah? Nine is the month. So once this is done, uh, let's do the next thing. So schedule for selected tasks, which is too automatic. So this this is done, and how you can see is the, this this is the way. So task mode, if you click here, there are two ways. So it is switched to auto schedule. So all the tasks are now auto schedule, and how to identify that? This is manually schedule, right? The symbol of uh, this symbol represent manually schedule, and this is auto schedule. So that is the task mode we get, right? Now, uh, moving on to the next slide. Select manually select scheduled or auto schedule from the taskbar. So all the new task for the, there is a taskbar at the bottom. That's what we, we are going to do. So all the new tasks for the current project will be according to this selection. So let's see what does it mean. So this is, the taskbar, okay, uh, essentially, as it said, this is the uh, status bar, okay, and status bar, bar has this uh, auto schedule length. So this, is, from here, the default is manually scheduled. So I'm going to select auto schedule. So now, if I define, uh, uh, let's say, design, right? It is by default going to take, uh, uh, let's say, uh, essentially auto uh, schedule. So automatically schedule the task. As the uh, symbol suggests, it is going to be automatically scheduled. Yeah. So that's what it is. This is manually. So only manually scheduled so far is uh, requirements defined. Uh, manual schedule task dates are not automatically updated. Okay, whereas auto schedule task dates are calculated by the Microsoft project. So that's what the only difference is. Uh, it is not very evident in the example I have done so far. Okay, but it is pretty evident uh, in the example. Uh, this example I had taken. So what is happening actually in here is since it is uh, once it is done uh, automatically, so let's say, essentially uh, this is what auto schedule, right now what is happening I, I'll tell you, uh, because of uh, whatever save that has happened, okay, The date calculation, as as the name suggests over here, right? Task dates are not uh, automatically updated. But if you uh, go back and uh, see, uh, you will see that you know 
uh, this exercise when we did uh, the duration was saying showing 16 days uh, the date was not uh, you know properly calculated yeah so that's how it was so select manually or auto selected uh, schedule from the status bar all the new tasks for the current so this we have already seen so let's do it again so right now if I do any any uh, add any task right let's say task 1 task 2 it is going to be automatically manual so that is what is there on your status bar if I select it as uh, uh, auto schedule then then onwards all the tasks will be auto scheduled for us yeah so that's what it is I think it is simple straightforward right so I'm just deleting this unnecessary task for now all right uh, So after entering the task under the under the task name heading, manually schedule or auto schedule can be selected for the individual task. This also we have seen, right? Uh, you can change this auto select uh, auto schedule to man manually schedule and vice versa, right? Manually schedule to auto schedule and so on. This also is a milestone that we have defined. We can uh, change it to auto schedule, right? depending on the let's say it also has a dependency 6 right so it becomes auto schedule and so on so the dates gets calculated for that uh, we all know since this is milestone uh, it is having zero days and if I say it has a dependency on 6 this is how it is going to go right So let's see where is our milestone. This is where our milestone is. I can uh, essentially define this new, new milestone as requirements defined and delete this one. I'm doing these tasks uh, so that you know you understand uh, the way the things can be done pretty easily right over here so auto schedule task so making auto schedule uh, default for all the new tasks of, of all new projects so how we do it so for the current project we have done but if I create all the new projects so this is how you can navigate to backstage by clicking file tab then click on options in there and then click on schedule in that right and there you have this scheduling option for this uh, all new projects you have auto scheduled task so new task created either manually or auto schedule so you can select the two yeah so let's see that quickly so clicking on file takes me to backstage right from there I need to go to options So from option you go to schedule, right? Uh, so new task created, either they can be manually scheduled or auto scheduled, right? So you can select one and uh, I'll keep it a manually scheduled in case, you know. Uh, but you can essentially, new task created, uh, this is where uh, you can say either manually select, manually scheduled or auto scheduled. And when you press OK, any new project that you that you are going to create will have right manually select. Yeah. So checking project statistics, uh, how we do that? Click on project tab, then properties group and project information. So let's do that. Uh, so we click on project tab. And in here, we come to project information, right? Project tab, properties group. So this is properties group, right? In there, you go to project information, right? So right now, uh, this is the way it is looking like, right? Uh, I'm showing you the slide again. Going back to the tool, you can click on statistics, which will show me this. 
So let's click on statistics. So it shows me the current start date, uh, what is the likely finish date, right? Which has been calculated for us. Uh, duration 33 days. So this uh, this is what it calculates for you. So you don't have to do this calculation. So that's uh, the advantage that you get. So this is what uh, getting to the statistics of uh, checking project statistics, right? So you can check project finish date, right? Uh, in here, uh, check the current duration, 17 days, actual duration, and so on. We'll see the rest of the work uh, hours and cost and all, uh, you know, appropriately. The percent complete, uh, variance, etc. We'll see appropriately in uh, subsequent slides. So, so we are on the same page. Uh, so please explain. She's saying, uh, you know, how do you go for notes? So adding notes to task is as uh, simple as this. So essentially, you go to task tab. In there, you go to properties <coughs> uh, group. In there, you have notes option. You can see this is being uh, essentially enlarged over here. The same one. Yeah. So <coughs> this is the easiest thing. This is the way you can do it. And this is the example it is given over here. Adding notes to tasks. So select the task where any specific information needs to be entered. So let's do it in actual tool. So let's say we have a requirement gathering. We want to add any notes to this. We are on project tab right now. So let's switch to task tab. From task tab you can see the properties uh, group in task tab and here is our note. So you can click on it and you go to the notes. So let's say how I am going to do, do the requirement gathering is uh, methods used are brainstorming and interview. I say okay. <coughs> so if you hover over, uh, over uh, on this information, so you can see the notes getting added over here. So if I hover on that uh, cell, then it shows methods used are brainstorming and interview. You can see that. Yeah. So same thing is explained over here. So use questionnaire templates from previous project to gather requirements for example. Right. And after clicking OK, we got the notes. So this is the way we got it. Right. And if I hover on this uh, cell, then I'm getting this information. Whatever uh, we have entered in our notes. Right, so that comes under information column. So it populates icon in in the indicator field. So this is the indicator field uh, icon is populated, and upon hovering the cursor on notes icon, the note appears in screen tip. So this is what we saw already: adding hyperlink to task. So this is how it is done. Essentially, requirement analysis, uh, right click on the task to which hyperlink is to be added. Click hyperlink from the shortcut menu, right? And uh, essentially, the insert hyperlink dialog box appears. So this is what appears. In the <coughs> text to display box, type learning resources, right? And in the address box, type www.edureka.co. This was done earlier when it was dot n. Uh, you can type dot co, and that's about it. Then once that is done, uh, that hyperlink will appear in indicator box, right? And uh, indicator column for the task. And when you click the hyperlink, the web page is open. So it's let's do it. So we are on a requirement analysis, right? In here, I do right click, go to hyperlink. So in text to display, I write as this was saying, uh, essentially learning resources, learning 
resources. And in address bar, you type www.edureka.co. Okay. So this is the way it appears. So, so once this is done, so if I click on this, so you can see that uh, it will open the uh, Edureka site. Yeah. So coming back, uh, I have the task constraints. This is a slide number uh, 36. It says a task constraint determines uh, the flexibility avail available in scheduling task. So constraints can be flexible, inflexible, or semi-flexible. Okay. Uh, in here, you have to select the task on the task tab in the properties group. Click on information. So that's what that's how you can can go to essentially constraint. So constraint. Uh, in here, uh, if you drop down, you get uh, various option. You have to go to advanced tab. So let's do that parallelly so that you will be. So let's we let's go to requirement specification draft. Okay, uh, let's say and we go to properties information, and from there we go to advanced tab. So you have. Uh, the name of the task, the requirement specification draft, right? And the constraint type is as soon as possible, finish no earlier than, finish no later than, etc. Yeah. So we will keep the default one, which is as soon as possible. So the constraints are uh, flexible, as soon as possible, as late as possible. So these are like flexible constraint. Uh, you know that you know as soon as possible is as soon as possible. It is definitely flexible and that's what it means. And same thing appears to you are as late as possible. Semi-flexible is start no earlier than, start no later than, finish no earlier than. So you have some date assigned but uh, there is some buffer uh, before you do that, right? So these are the semi-flexible one. And the last two are inflexible so they are must start on must finish on so these two are inflexible so these are the categories of the constraint of the task so as soon as uh, possible is the constraint type selected over here and constraint date can be selected only for auto scheduled task please note okay so this cannot be done for uh, the tasks which are not auto scheduled. So the constraint date can be put. Since all of the dates uh, so far we have, we are uh, auto scheduled. We can put the constraint date. Yeah, like this. So let's do that. So we can put the constraint date because these are the auto scheduled task right so let's say as soon as possible so we are saying 29 you can say 28 also and can put it so you can see that that uh, constraint is appearing over there this task has a start no earlier than so this is for everyone's information uh, whoever is you know seeing your uh, project management plan. So now if I want to set a latest time or a date uh, by which the task should be completed and I want it to be a reminder for team members, then what can be done with MSP, Microsoft Project. So in this case, you can add a deadline date for a task. So essentially the question was, uh, you want to set a latest time or date by which task should be completed. So essentially it was talking about deadline. So, so you can add a deadline to a date. So how do you do that? Uh, adding deadline basically. So on entering a deadline date, a uh, deadline indicator is shown on Gantt chart and select the task 
on task tab in the properties click on information so let's do that we'll set a deadline <coughs> So let's stay set a deadline on the review for example, right? We are in task tab, in properties group, information and this can be reached even by just double clicking on it, okay? Then go to, so we have come here. Now go to advanced tab and you have a deadline over there. So we are going to advanced tab and we have deadline over the, here. So let's, uh, it is 28th, so we'll put 2110 as, 1021 uh, as deadline. So once you select the deadlines, it is appearing as uh, this mark over here. So uh, if a task is scheduled to finish later than its deadline, a red icon op appears uh, in the indicators column and warning message is displayed that this task goes past its deadline. So we'll have to set a deadline, let's say, So this is the way uh, essentially, if I'm, this is not a very correct representation, but in, uh, to explain, you know, how it is for us. So, so this task goes past its deadline on, so that information comes out essentially hmm, in this indicator box, indicator column, yeah. So, this takes me to the next, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's all I can uh, take in here. Recurring task, on the task tab in the insert group below the task button. So, you are here, right? Uh, in, in insert group below the task button, right? Select the recurring task. So that's what uh, you have to do. So in task name type team meeting, so here actually you are defining a new task which is a recurring task, okay, which is essentially a, a team meeting which is a appearing every one week uh, duration of, you know, couple of hours. And it's a weekly, so it's a scheduling thing which gets added to your uh, Microsoft project. So let's say, let's do that. So in here, in the top, so we are going back in task tab, insert group. So we are in task tab, uh, this is the insert group, right? So you come here and add the recurring task. So re recurring task name is team meeting. Duration is, two hours, it is weekly, it recurs one week, right? And you have, uh, it starts on 28, 9 and in well, let's say Wednesday 12, 11, uh, 11, 12, I mean 12th of uh, November, yeah, 2014. We have to uh, select one of the day, which I think I missed, so, can do that. So you can see that uh, the team meeting gets added, you know, appropriately. It gets scheduled. So seven meetings get scheduled automatically using recurring task. 